This is the Panasonic Lumix BGH1, probably the most special and different Panasonic Micro Four Third camera that I have ever used. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what it is and also I'm going to share with you some of my test results. Hello, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have another new camera from Panasonic. This is the Panasonic Lumix BGH1. This is probably the most unique and also different Micro Four Third camera that Panasonic has ever created. So I have a lot of things that I want to talk about and also some test results I want to share with you guys in this video. So let's get started. Panasonic noticed that there is an increased demand for low-budget video production and also live streaming video setup, especially when it involves multiple cameras. Most of the mirrorless camera in the market these days are designed um, so that you can use it by itself. And what I mean is it will have the LCD screen at the back, also have an electronic viewfinder and also have a proper grip so that you can just grab the camera and start shooting. But at the same time, those cameras are not really specially designed to use with lots of external accessory or some kind of setup. That's why Panasonic created this box shaped camera and it is a special cinema camera that is positioned between the GH series and the S1H. The camera uses a 10 megapixel micro four third sensor which is probably the same as the one in GH5S or very similar to it and that's why Panasonic called it a BGH1 which is a box shaped GH camera. Since the BGH1 doesn't have any screen or viewfinder and also it doesn't have the IBIS, the in-body image stabilizer, so the camera is not really designed for run and gun style handheld shooting. You can do handheld shooting if you use it with a gimbal and an external monitor attached to it but I would imagine most of the usage with this BGH1 would be um, put it on a fixed location either fix it on a tripod or have it mounted on a fixed location especially when you have places that is hard to mount a larger camera the BGH1 is also specially designed for live streaming. The camera itself and also the software that Panasonic has developed make it a very good choice if you want to have a multiple camera live streaming setup. Okay, now let's talk about the design and build quality of this BGH1. Now, this is a box shaped camera as I have mentioned many times already in this video and the size of it is really quite small. Compare it with the GH5S, if you look at the front, you can see this is a lot smaller than the GH5S. Uh, if I put it this way, you can see that if I cut off the grip completely, then the GH5S is roughly the same size as the BGH1. But if you look at it from the top, you would notice that the BGH1 is actually quite a bit thicker or deeper than the GH5S and I guess one of the reason is because there is the extra heat sink and also fan that is here. The fan itself is controllable that you can turn on and turn off and have different settings and you may wonder why do we now need to have a fan here while the GH5 or the GH5S they both don't have any fan to um, do some active cooling and I think the reason is because with the GH5S, the power consumption is only 3.7 watt 
and with this BGH1, the power consumption is now 7.9 volt, which is more than double the power consumption of the GH5S and this is to support some of the new changes, new feature that is available on the BGH1 and probably because of that Panasonic put some active cooling here to keep the camera from overheating and probably also because Panasonic being Panasonic they are really good at uh, making their camera not so easy to overheat compared to most other competitors in the market. So that is probably one of the reasons why this BGH1 is quite a bit deeper than the GH5S. If you are running the cooling fan at full speed and recording in a quiet indoor place, you will be able to hear the fan noise. But having said that, it is definitely a lot more quiet compared to the Atomos Ninja 5's cooling fan running at full speed. The weight of this camera is 545 gram for the body only, so this is about 17% lighter than the GH5S. But we are now comparing without the battery, so depends on how you're going to power this BGH1. The weight, the total weight with the battery could be quite a different story. But I'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about the different power option for this BGH1. There are many mounting screw holes on the cameras. So on each side, you have three mounting holes here and three on this side and also three at the top and also two more at the bottom. So all these different mounting screw holes all around the camera just give you a lot more flexibility on how you can mount the camera and also allow you to attach extra accessories onto the camera body itself directly. Just like the S1H, the BGH1 also has a tele lamp at the front and also at the back of the camera. And the front tele lamp, they have quite an interesting design because they put it at the corner here. And what that means is it allows you to see the tele lamp from three sides of the camera. So you can see it when you are in front of the camera and from the side. And also at the top, you can also see the front tele lamp. So with the front and the rear tele lamp together, it means unless you are standing at the right side or below the camera, you should be able to see the tele lamp quite clearly when you are filming. At the top of the camera, we have the control dial here with the menu button in the middle and we have the red record button and then we have four other buttons at each side of the camera and then at the front, we have the power button at the top right corner and then three more customizable button and that's pretty much all the buttons and controls that you have available on this BGH1. At the back of the camera we have a center area here for you to mount the battery and then we have multiple covers which behind it we have many different input and output ports that is available that I'm going to talk about very soon. And one pretty cool thing is all these rubber covers, you can actually remove all of them. Uh, at first, it feel a bit scary when I try to remove it, but actually they can all come out from the camera. So that is suitable when you want to have it uh, mounted on some permanent or semi-permanent setup uh, so that you can have a more tidy setup and probably because of that Panasonic didn't mention anything about BGH1 being a weatherproof camera. The camera itself feels very very solid. It feels like a little brick when you are holding it like this. Even compared it with the GH5 or GH5S which is already a very solid camera, the BGH1 definitely feel a lot more solid than that. On the side of the camera we have the dual SD card slots here. It's actually very satisfying when I try to open this SD card slot door. But anyway, if you have watched my uh, Lumix S5 review, you may have remember I complained a little bit about the S5 dual card slot because only one of them is the faster UHS-2 type and the other one is just the normal UHS-1. But with this BGH1, they are both the high-speed UHS-2, so it can support up to the V90 video recording speed. And just like most of the high-end uh, cinema camera from Panasonic, you can do either simultaneous recording, so you can record the video to both of the card if you want to have backup, or 
you can do uh, relay recordings so one card and the other one and if you do that it also support hot swapping so that means in theory you can record unlimited footage using this bgh1 or you can also record the different type of the um, the file to the different card slot if you want to do that and at this corner here we have three bnc terminals the top one is the 3g sdi connector which can output up to full hd at 60 frames per second 422 at 10 bit color depth the cool thing about the SDI connector is that it is a lot stronger than the HDMI, even the full-size HDMI connector. And also you can run a much longer cable with the SDI output compared to the normal HDMI output. But another very cool thing about the BGH1 is that the camera allows you to output to both SDI and also HDMI at the same time, even when you are recording internally to the SD card. So that just gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of how you want to output and also monitor the footage when you are filming with this camera. Below the SDI output, we have the time code in and out connector and also a Gen knob input connector. You may wonder what is a Gen knob input and how is it different to the time code. So, in some way they are very similar both of them are used to synchronize when you have multiple cameras so you can synchronize the footage from the multiple camera the main difference is with the time code the information is embedded when you are filming and recorded into the footage while with the gen log it would send a synchronized signal to each of the camera for every single frame so this is better if you want to have very precise synchronization between your multiple cameras but you can also use the gen log and the time code together to have the best synchronization results on this side of the camera, we have the microphone jack and also the headphone jack as you would have expected. But below that, we have a new thing, which is a Ethernet port. And I believe this is the first time on a Panasonic Lumix camera that you can find a Ethernet port. And this Ethernet port is actually very, very useful. There are three main functions that is provided by this Ethernet port. The first one is to allow you to remote control the camera using a Ethernet port connection. So using the new Panasonic Lumix teetering for box software, you can control this BGH1 remotely across a local area network. And this new software actually allow you to connect and also remotely control up to 12 BGH1 camera at the same time. So that would be very useful if you want to have a multiple camera setup. And the second function that is provided by this Ethernet port is that you can actually power this BGH1 using the PoE, which is the power over Ethernet feature of your wide network setup. So if you are going to install this BGH1 in a permanent setup, the PoE feature would be a great way to power this camera. And the third function that is provided by this Ethernet port is that you can also transfer the video footage over the Ethernet using this Ethernet connection. Now, this is a feature that is still not available right now with this current firmware, but it should be coming very soon. There are three different ways you can power this BGH1. The first one is to use the supplied AC adapter, and that would be the best way if you want to have a semi-permanent setup. And the second way is to use a rechargeable battery like this VBR59 or you can get the larger VBR118. One thing you need to know is that this battery and the charger is not included as part of the camera. So you have to buy it separately if you want to operate the camera in a more mobile setup. And there are some good things and bad things about this battery setup. Let's talk about the good thing first. The good thing is this battery is quite a bit bigger than the usual battery that you have in your mirrors camera. And what that means is the battery life is very good. Even though I said before, the power consumption of this BGH1 camera is quite a bit higher than the GH5 or GH5S. But when I was shooting with this battery, 
I was able to, let me think about it, I was able to go out like for one evening and shoot for a few hours and then I went out again, the next morning I shot another few hours and then I can still shoot another hour or so when I back home and then I see the battery level is start getting to quite low. So I shot a good, I think probably six hours or so or even longer than that using just one battery which is something I definitely couldn't do with most other mirrorless cameras in the market. So yeah, that is very good because I don't have to worry about uh, recharging battery all the time when I'm shooting with this battery setup. Now talk about the bad thing. The first bad thing is you have to buy it separately and that would increase the total cost of this camera setup. And the second bad thing is because this is quite a bit bigger battery compared to say the battery used in the GH5S. So even though the BGH1 itself is quite a bit lighter than the GH5S if you talk about just the body weight but once you add a battery onto the BGH1 the total weight of this camera is actually a little bit heavier than the GH5S with the normal battery installed. The third way to provide power to the BGH1 is just using the Ethernet port which is something I just mentioned a little while ago. So that would be a great and also tidy easy way if you have the BGH1 connected to your Ethernet local area network especially when you have multiple of them so you don't have to worry about having multiple AC adapter connected to your cameras. And if you really want, you can have multiple power source all connected to the camera at the same time. And if you do that, then the order of how the camera will draw the battery will be first from your AC adapter and then through the Ethernet port and then finally from the battery itself. Not surprisingly, the BGH1 continued to use Panasonic's DFD technology as its autofocus system and is also using the latest version that was introduced by the S5 which has quite a few different improvements as I have shown in the S5 review. The camera should be able to track your subject just a lot more reliable, doesn't matter if your subject is tilting the head or have the head turned around sideways or partially blocked by some other object or even when your subject is quite away from the camera, the camera can still track your subject a lot more reliable compared to the previous Panasonic cameras. And also not surprisingly, I have done some more autofocus tests. So first thing, I did some comparison with the GH5 5S running the latest firmware so I have the two cameras set up side by side and just see how the autofocus performance is like comparing these two cameras. So I was doing this test at 4K25 and pretty much all the settings are identical and you can see that the BGH1 overall seems to be a little bit more responsive and also more reliable compared to the GH5S when shooting under the identical situation. Even at 4K25, the performance is actually not bad at all. And after that, I thought, what about if I do some comparison with the Panasonic Lumix S5 because after all, they are both running the latest autofocus system from Panasonic. But surprisingly, when I have the two cameras set up side by side and running equivalent settings. The BGH1, the autofocus performance seems to be quite a bit better than the S5. It's also a little bit faster and also a little bit more reliable than the S5 even when they are shooting under the same equivalent settings. So it may have something to do with the fact that the BGH1's power consumption is quite a bit higher than the previous camera. So maybe the extra power consumption give extra processing power and that give extra autofocus performance compared to the previous cameras. Okay, before we continue and talk about the video recording, if you are enjoying this video so far, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. 
Panasonic said the BGH1's software is based on the S1 Edge and they have also redesigned the circuit design and you can record Full HD and 4K video both internally or externally via the HDMI connection and all the different recording options there is no time limit. If you are recording 4K up to 30 frames per second footage internally, the maximum quality you can record is up to 10 bit 422 using the all intra codec at 400 megabit per second, which is the same as the GH5S. If you record at 50 or 60 frames per second in 4K resolution, you can now record in 10 bit 420 at the H.265 long geop at 200 megabit per second, which is a improvement over the GH5S because the GH5S can only do 8 bit if you are recording 4K 50 or 60 frames per second footage internally. The maximum ISO you can go up to when you're recording video is 204,800 ISO which is the same as the GH5S and also the same as the S1, S1H and the S5. High ISO performance of this BGH1 is definitely pretty good even at up to ISO 25,600 the footage is still pretty clean and not a lot of noise. When you go up to ISO 51200 then you starting to see quite a bit of noise in the output footage. I did some high ISO comparison tests with the GH5S and S5 and I also included my little G85 as part of the test. Unfortunately with the G85 the maximum ISO that you can go up to when you are recording video is only 6400. But anyway have a look at the output footage comparison. The results from the GH5S and the BGH1 is very similar as expected but the colors and look are slightly different even at the same settings. The colors and the look of the BGH1 footage is actually closer to the S1 than the GH5S. And if you compare the results from the BGH1 against the full frame S5, I would say the difference is actually quite small, smaller than I expected. Even at the very high ISO, I would say there's only around one stop difference between these two cameras. The BGH1 can capture anamorphic video at 3328 times 2496 resolution and it can also support different magnification ratio from 1.3 times to 1.33, 1.5, 1.8 and also 2 times magnification. BGH1's sensor has the dual native ISO design and it also has the V-Log picture profile already included just like the GH5S. The dynamic range according to Panasonic with the BGH1 is 13 stops. So this is between the GH5S which is 12 stop and the full frame Numix camera S1, S1H, S5 which is 14 stops. So I did a test to compare the dynamic range between these three cameras. I shot some 4 stop overexposed footage using the BGH1 and then tried to recover it in post processing. The result is not bad at all. I managed to recover most of the details in the footage. And I repeat the same test with the GH5S and also the S5 which I believe has the same dynamic range as the S1 and S1 Edge. Comparing the BGH1 with the GH5S, the BGH1 definitely has wider dynamic range than the GH5S but I could recover quite a bit more highlight with the full frame S5. So overall, while the BGH1 doesn't have exactly the same kind of dynamic range as the S5, its dynamic range is noticeably better than the GH5S. The camera can capture high frame rate full HD video at up to 240 frames per second. If you are capturing up to 200 frames per second, there is no crop at all, so you are using the full sensor when you're recording those high frame rate footage but if you go over 200 frames per second then there would be a little bit of crop. The quality of the footage is pretty good even when capturing at 240 frames per second but unlike the S1H and S5 which provide continuous autofocus when you are capturing this high frame rate video, with the BGH1 there is no autofocus support at all when you are capturing high frame rate video. So to say I'm a little bit disappointed would be probably quite an understatement. 
and so far I haven't talked anything about taking photo with the BGH1 because you cannot actually take photo using the BGH1. Well, I'm not exactly sure because technically you still can. But if you are just shooting with the camera itself, you don't have a way to take any photos because there's not even a photo shutter button or you don't have a way to turn to the photo mode. And even if you are using the smartphone app, which I'll talk a little bit about very soon, you also cannot capture photo using the smartphone app. The only way that you can capture still photo is if you connect the camera to your computer using the tethering app. But even so, you can only capture JPEG but not raw photos. The most unusual part and also the biggest learning curve with this BGH1 is definitely the control of this camera. Because the camera, there's no LCD screen and no touch screen and also it's missing most of those dial that you usually on the Lumix mirrors camera. There's no mode dial, there's no autofocus switch and you only have a couple of buttons and even the menu of the BGH1 is a bit different to the usual Lumix camera and for example the quick menu is quite a bit different. They have redesigned the quick menu to um, accommodate the fact that it doesn't have any screen and also it only has buttons. So for me, it actually took me a few days before I get a bit more familiar with how to control uh, this BGH1 camera. And you probably know that I have used pretty much all the Panasonic camera in the market. So yeah, for me, it still takes me quite a few days before I feel a bit more familiar with the camera. And you do have to attach a uh, external monitor to control the camera because otherwise you're just blindly changing the setting without noticing what you are doing. And I actually have two little stories that I want to share with you when using this camera. They are a bit embarrassing but I like to share with you anyway. When I first received the camera, I actually haven't figured out how to switch on the camera because I hold the camera, I look around, I try to find the switch the power on switch and i spent 10 minutes and i actually couldn't figure out how to turn on the camera and in the end i have to read the menu and then i figured out there is actually a power button right in the front of the camera um after i figured out it's actually quite noticeable but before i figured out i actually didn't see this power button so <laughs> yeah a bit embarrassing that I have to actually look up the menu to figure out how to switch on the camera and the second thing is when I was using the camera I have the external monitor attached to it so that I can go through the menu check the settings and do all the adjustment by looking at the external monitor and change it but all of a sudden all the um, the on-screen display all the menus disappeared and I couldn't get it back I don't know what happened I turned off the camera and restart the camera no matter what I do I press the menu button I press the quick menu button I still can't see any on-screen display I still can't see the menu the camera seems to be working fine and when I press the button it seems to be doing something but I just don't know what I'm doing so end up I have to call Panasonic and tell them, hey, um, I don't know what I did, but I lost all the menus and display. And then figured out what happened is that I actually changed the HDMI output to a clean HDMI output. And that's why I don't see any menu or any other display that I usually would see. And usually you can fix it quite easily by pressing the function one button. Unfortunately, I programmed the function one button to do something else. So I couldn't actually just press this function one button to re-enable the, um, the on-screen display. So in the end, the guys from Panasonic, they helped me to fix the problem. Um, they are really good. So they, they managed to help me to fix it. Thank you very much. So, uh, but that's definitely pretty embarrassing because I somehow managed to uh, lose all the display and I couldn't figure out how to get it back. So uh, yeah, one need to advise is don't change the FN1 function and don't map it to something else. 
if you don't want to run into the same problem that I had. But actually, I lied a little bit because there are two other ways that you can control the camera without having to attach the external monitor so they can see the menu and know what settings you are changing. So the two ways, the first one is connect the camera to your computer, either using the USB connection or using the Ethernet port. And when you do that, you can run the Lumix Tether for Box software, which is the special software that is designed for this BGH1 camera. Then through that software, you can change all the settings on the camera. You can even go into the menu system and just change all the settings as if you are just having a touch screen on the camera and go through all the settings. And as I mentioned earlier, you can connect up to 12 BGH1 camera to the computer at the same time using the Ethernet connection. In this way, it's very easy way for you to do a multiple camera setup and also change the settings and control all of them at the same time. And if you are in an outdoor location, a more mobile location where you don't have your computer or you don't have an Ethernet connection setup, then you can use the smartphone app to connect to the uh, BGH1 using the Bluetooth connection, which would then switch to the Wi-Fi once the connection is established. So to connect it is pretty much the same way as how you would do with your other Panasonic Lumix camera. And once you have set up and established the connection between your smartphone and the camera, as long as you leave the Bluetooth setting on on the camera, then even if you power off your camera, then next time when you re-turn on the camera, you can quickly reconnect your smartphone to the camera even without any uh, external monitor attached to it because it will automatically pair the Bluetooth between your camera and your smartphone and then use that to establish the Wi-Fi connection very quickly. I think it's probably within 30 seconds or so then you can re-enable the connection that you can now control your camera from your uh, smartphone phone quite easily using the smartphone app. So this is definitely a very convenient way for you to check the framing or the footage or change some of the settings when you have the camera mounted in a position that is hard for you to attach uh, external monitor. According to the internet, Micro Four Thirds is dead and also Panasonic is fully abandoning the Micro Four Thirds system and only focus on the full frame l mount system. I think no one can guarantee Micro Four Thirds will be around forever, especially the speed, everything is changing so quickly these days. So I think no one can guarantee anything forever. But just this year, Panasonic has released two Micro Four Thirds cameras, the G100 and this BGH1. And while they may not be exactly the camera that you like and also the spec may not be exactly what you want, but these are two brand new camera and they are two different camera that is not a uh, Mark II, Mark III or Mark 85 of some existing models. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with releasing a Mark II, Mark III or Mark IV camera model for some popular models. But it's very important to see that Panasonic is actually trying something new, trying something different. For example, with the G100, they put in a small body with the also audio technology trying to target uh, some different user groups and also with this box shaped camera which is something Panasonic has never done before and also they are releasing a new software and also there's a new SDK coming soon. So this just shows you that Panasonic is experiment different things and I think this is a very important thing because the market is changing so quickly these days and it's very important for the camera manufacturer to try out different things. Some of those may work, some of them may not work, but if you don't try it, then you never know whether it works or not. The BGH1 may share some technology with the GH5S, but it's definitely the most advanced Micro Four Thirds camera from Panasonic. And I'm not just talking about things like the improvement in the autofocus system or the fact that you can now record 4K 60 
10 bit footage internally or the improve in dynamic range but also with the new box shape setup and also all those new connection ports for example the ethernet port the sdi output the JNOC, and also very importantly the new tether software which allow you to connect and also control multiple uh, bgh1 at the same time this just really expands how you could use this camera for live streaming and also a multi-camera shooting setup so for me i would really like to see panasonic keep trying different new things and see what are other new things that they can do with their lumix cameras